what's happening at the Fabri party was the idea that started around 20, 2016. Ooh. So that was initial, the idea was our beautiful garden store. Same concept with the Fabri party. It was the whole idea was to have a space where people can come through. And that's when I, yeah, that's when I started visiting Harare. But that's when I started coming to Harare, visiting and studying at the same time. So yeah. I come 2012, I used to do the weekend lessons. I was studying journalism, so yeah. I come through, do weekend lessons. Then 2013, I shifted to class, to day classes. That's when I relocated to Harare. Okay, that's when you actually like moved here that's like when I permanently. Moved in, yeah. Now permanently, that's when I moved in for a longer period compared to 2012. Yeah. Okay, okay, fair so enough, fair enough. Um, and so you, you were studying journalism, right? Mm -hmm. um, at this point in time, uh, does Uleni at this point uh, want to become an artist but just studying journalism because that's like a more viable thing or Uleni at this point actually just wants to be a journalist and hasn't been exposed to this other side? So bro, I know how things happen. Like I've always been doing this. Everything that I'm doing, I've always been doing it from yeah. music, music, fashion and everything. Fashion. But it was that situation where I even wanted to start in music or fashion, but I was told that now when you get advice from family and parents, they yeah. tell me that rather study something you can't do on your own. I can't do music on my own, you can do fashion on your own, you can do all these other things on your own. Yeah. So you have to pick. There was only money enough for covering one subject, yeah. either music <laughs> or gym, but I ended up choosing journalism because it encompassed all the things that I wanted to do. So I picked journalism so that I can do it because it, it was touching on almost everything that I do. Oh, that's so interesting. Journalism, yeah. yeah, that's quite interesting. So it was, um, was it journalism? Because journalism allows you to maybe go to like fashion events, music events, mm. like it was that. that exactly, was the thing. yeah, it was, it was that, that was the approach. So I thought of picking journalism because it was closer than everything that I, it was yeah. closer to everything that I always wanted to do. So it was like yeah, because if you, had picked, if you had picked music, mm -hmm. that kind of neglects the fashion, I, I suppose. Mm -hmm. If you pick fashion, that kind of neglects the music as well. Mm -hmm. Ooh, so like, it helped me. So when I, I did journalism, it helped me to... Even from being a journalism student before finishing the, the program, yeah. you already going to press conferences, already going to events, getting complimentary tickets, getting accreditation. You're seeing all these things, you're seeing music, you, getting access to bigger international artists, you're yeah. getting access to fashion shows, you're getting access to all those other things that you want to do. Like, for instance, if I wanted to get to a certain space musically or get to certain spaces, music spaces, yeah. as a musician, it was going to take me years, or fashion spaces as a fashion designer, was going to take me years, but getting there as a, as a journalist, as a media practitioner, already getting to yeah. them. And it's free. You like really? Yeah, to... getting in for free. Like getting accreditation <laughs> to Haifa. Cause I started going to Haifa. The first year I came here, going to Haifa with yeah. as a student. You have your the the press card. student accreditation. Now first we had oh press, okay so as a we had a, we had a college card like press press club card before being accredited as a as a, as a journalist. As a actually, yeah, option. yeah. So yeah, with the press card. Got accreditation to Haifa and these other events. Had friends who were doing soccer festival. We were working at Makamba Network. So, yeah. so you access all these top, top, top events like yeah. for free since since then. And you've been you get to learn how things are done, how things how you even apply. Then after that, you just learn how to apply for accreditation, get a press card and stuff. So it, it gave it was more like yeah, it's, it's a, Played as a cheat code kind of yeah. thing. I can I can see it now. Now that you say it like that, I can definitely see how it's like a cost conscious thing, but at the same time beyond just like saving on, on money, you're getting you're building networks like you're talking about uh, the guys at Magamba, all of these events, mm. the artists, you're getting to see how things are done. You can like see the yeah. performance yeah. and mm. ooh, behind the scenes and the uh, Yeah, that's definitely a cheat code. Everything. <laughs> yeah. But I think yeah. I don't know how to call it, but it was, I think it's something that really helped to, to, to see things in a, in a, in a, in a different way and get to understand things faster than 
then you'd would have if, if, if it was yeah. just like if you if were a practitioner music. in music mm-hmm. or you were a practitioner in fashion. fashion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's I love that man. I love yeah. that. And so what also then interests me is how you then um how you then pivot from being like a journalist mm. to the multidisciplinary creative that you are now. Um and maybe correct me if, I, if I'm wrong, are you even still like a journalist? Do you still consider yourself that or now you're just more on the creative side? No, it's still that right, never changes. Nothing ever changed, nothing ever stopped, nothing ever started. Yeah. I was just like that since I'm still practicing as a journalist, but it's a, it's a space where I understand certain things where like I'm not like from 2021, 2021, I think that's when I stopped contributing stories to yeah. other media hours, but I used to contribute stories for sustainability and stuff where like, you do a story, maybe two stories a week. I was like, get paid and do it. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. there was a time where I'm like, Ash, not as cool, but it's keeping you stuck in one space. So it's just a matter of taking a risk and saying, oh, cool, I'm yeah. not doing this. I'll oh, focus on this. Where That's why the scan and struggle. The scan and struggle before the final party, before the other things. It's an online platform that focuses on visual art, where I document stories around visual art. Yeah. Most of those stories, I used to pitch them to media houses, they're like, no, they couldn't see what they They couldn't see the vision. Yeah, so I'm like, let me keep those stories on my page or document them and keep them, I'll figure out what to do with them. So yeah, I'm still practicing, but I'm not under a media house. I'm still building on my own. Yeah, so I love what you mentioned there about, um, like almost like that, that, the risk reward curve in that um, when when you're practicing as a journalism, uh, you're, you're actually getting paid, so there's like a real incentive to keep doing that yeah. because maybe your 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 fashion endeavors and your music uh, is not paying you at the same rate or maybe at a sustainable rate at, at that point in time. For you, what then informs the decision to say I'm stopping now and I'm taking this risk? Um, I think you hinted on it when you said I felt like it was holding me back a bit. Mm-hmm. So maybe in, in what sense do you feel like uh, that was still like holding you back? No, it's not holding back as such, but it's limit. Yeah, maybe it's the same way. Maybe it is. It's, it's, a, it's a bit of... <laughs> so I think it's understanding the space where I have to own something. Yeah. So with that, otherwise, you do stories, you submit them somewhere. There's no credit. You're not credited. Yeah. You are given money, yeah. money to eat and cover costs. So <laughs> survival bread, <laughs> survival. And this. Yeah. So for me, it was like, if I get stuck on this, I'll be doing this maybe at fifth. Yeah. Because I haven't established anything of my own, so that's why I had to like let me establish something that focus on it, then give it that same energy and see how it goes and for the next yeah. five, ten years. So, yeah, it's that situation where, like, you know that you need this, but will you be doing Long something term. for the next 10, 20 <laughs> years? Because yeah. if you, I always tell the guys that if you are broke, you, can, you don't just die. You can't afford things that can kill you. You live longer <laughs> to suffer. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 it's tough. It's yeah, if you're broke, you don't just die. Broke, because you can't afford fast cars, you can't afford... Yeah, you can't even the, afford the, ki- the, the things that will kill you. Yeah. <laughs> you can't afford things that can kill you. So you live longer, so it's better to establish something. Because you work on something, for instance, uh, Scan Stroke was a brand, it's, it's a more facile brand, yeah. but it has all wings and stuff, like, plan proper from beginning to end and stuff. But yeah. it's always a matter of saying, all right, cool, or if you're broke, or if you don't have enough money, why then suffer more in a certain <laughs> space? Rather, <laughs> set price and do something that can sustain you, like, for the yeah. maybe in yeah. 20 years' time, you look at it, you're like, oh, cool, this way started and this way is going. Yeah. And you keep at that space. It's somewhere, somewhere, it's, it's going to make her something. Yeah. So that's I that decision <laughs> that I was making up. I'm like, oh, cool. Now I have to establish this. Then I can always find ways of sustaining it, yeah. and balancing things. But the fear, not the fear, but the danger has always been the space where you get trapped. 
where like you look at your week, you have three deadlines, <laughs> and those stories never give you fifty bucks, fifty bucks each. Yeah. It's, it's okay, but you'll be stuck in that space for ten, fifteen years. Yeah, and 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 I love that you you mentioned that specifically because, um, like you're saying, um, there's no credit, right? And 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 and, and the credit is incredibly important in the context of journalism. Um, I was a writer before I started this. Uh, It's incredibly important uh, in that you can't reference anything. So if that line, if that opportunity ceases to exist, you're almost like back to zero because you don't have like a a portfolio that you can point to. You can't point it. uh, You can say, I did that, but there's no proof. There's no proof. So it's an extremely it's an extremely dangerous way to live in that um, you get the money right, uh, but the moment that thing ceases to exist, or maybe maybe your health declines and you can't deliver at the pace that you could before or something, you almost go back to zero. It's like, dark, bro. You don't and exist. You don't have anything. <laughs> don't completely, completely just just you and people are like ah, I used to be a journalist. <laughs> Everybody oh, yeah. always the work. Yeah, like there's no work, there's, there's no work. no reference. So. But if you establish something that you can always... That you can point to on your own. Point on your own. You or also a market a platform for other media practitioners to work from and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, I yeah. think it's a matter of just growing up and learning things and learning the importance of owning something. Yeah. Like that mentality helps yeah. a lot, but it keeps... It makes you starve for a short term, but long term, I think things will shape out. Ooh. But short term, right, short term. you suffer Ooh. a lot for these sacrifices. <laughs> you suffer a lot and you face a lot of crazy, yeah. crazy, crazy things. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I appreciate that perspective because uh, it brings me closer to you in that um, I relate to you in a way that I didn't before you, you mentioned that, right? Because I think that's essentially what we are trying to do with, with Untold is to build something where um, we own the stories. Mm-hmm. We really own all of the content, uh, mm-hmm. and this is impactful work, right? Meaningful work, yeah, yeah, and yeah. so the sacrifice that comes in, like you mentioned. But over time, I do believe as well that mm-hmm. it will make sense. Yeah, I don't know, bro, because it's crazy how it's so much. The moment you start sacrificing. You, the moment you, start, you cross that line where you like yeah. you understand certain things, it's hard to come back and be in that space where you are... <laughs> the struggle brain phase. Where you are oppressed <laughs> or where you are told otherwise, or where you are told other things. So the moment you get to a certain space, you're like, ah, cool. This is how I see things. And this is what I believe in. Yeah. This is the idea that I believe in. And I know this idea is dope. You execute it, you do it on your own, and you prove, you see it works. It's hard to get back and be... And exactly. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard. It's hard. Uh, so one of the other things, one of the experiences I want to touch on, uh, I don't know where I got this, but I got this somewhere. The internet is beautiful, man. <laughs> but uh, you mentioned that after, after uni, mm. there was a time period where you went to South Africa, mm. Botswana, Namibia, mm. and Zambia. And mm. your your perspective, or at least what you mentioned at that time, was that what you wanted to do was to see Zim from a distance mm-hmm. before coming back and starting mm-hmm. to work. Mm-hmm. So my question then becomes, during that time, mm-hmm. um, what are some of the things you learned about Zim and yourself that are maybe now like reflected in, in the work that you put out, but that you specifically feel like you managed to see because of exposure? Mm-hmm. So it was, I think it was Botswana, South Africa, and Mozambique. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So it was, uh, it was that period where, like, I went, I did my attachment after, um, did, um, I did my attachment after studying. Yeah. And then I did, um, soon after that, I got a job, a short, short time job, like yeah. a good, good, good gig. Yeah. Then it gave me enough money to travel around. So I just packed, packed uh, took my backpack and packed them like shit. I'm just doing some brown to just yeah. <laughs> see things in the experiment. Yeah, yeah, like before. For me, it's always that special, but if you don't have much responsibilities, that's the best time to, to explore. So I don't yeah. know. I don't know where I got that, but I was like, let me just 
take this trip, then I went for it. Then when I'm done, when I was done with Botswana for a day, I think for a month, did I say then was so it was yeah so maybe for context like mm-hmm. how long was this period like all in all it was seven months oh that sounds dope yeah but I'll cut and contents because the issue of day is your number number of oh, days like, for like, instance, like Boson, visa type thing. yeah in person like they give you a number of days in person it was how many days the first day is first they gave they gave you 30 days it's yeah. 30 days then you have to extend. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so I extended in Botswana, and then when they were done, I couldn't extend anymore. So you come back Zim? No, then... I, I took my back pay again from Botswana, from Bos, I had to hike. Like hiking from <laughs> Bos <laughs> Yo, it sounds like a movie. to <laughs> SA. But like, cause my, for the first time, was, that, I think that was, yeah, that was the first time being SA. Yeah. So I, just, I walked, um, crossed from Botswana, and then with my backpack doing lifts. Yeah. I can I think I did about I mean uh five five lives from Botswana to forgot the other names, but my can up to up to job That was yeah, that's how I got in yeah. got there, then stayed in job in job I think about they gave me first uh, I mean it's ninety days, that's yeah. three months. Huh? That's, yeah. That's relatively reasonable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like he used That's a long days. time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it was my first first arrival, so they gave me enough days. But yeah, that trip was mainly trying to learn not learn, like it was just trying to explore things from a distance and also just trying my last thing thing of opportunities and stuff. But at the same time it was also that space where like just wanna see. Zim from a distance and see how things are. Yeah. And then from there, that's when you started seeing like, oh, cool, there's that, there's that, there's that, and this is where we are, and this is what's happening in other yeah. places, and this is what other people are doing. Then I was fortunate, I was like, I think I met this guy, uh, his name is Dr. Pachanga. Yeah. Like, he's, that time, I think he had just did the styling for, what's this, the Losing You video for Solange Knowles and stuff. So, yeah. Uh, he did um, Hit him up then, he was doing some workshops in, in New, Newtown Junction. They had a shop there, so I went there, da, 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 da. so I met him. But it was also another inspiring thing. Then from there, yeah, the Sony team was on before short time and stuff. Then came back. But yeah, it was just, I don't know what it was, but it was just. <laughs> Something it, told you. Yeah, I just gave an opportunity to... to see things from a distance. Yeah. yeah. From, from, from a distance. And when I came back, that's when I was like, I called Makas, I think I was still staying in Lecture I for Makas to come through to uh, our, our friends with Makas. Yeah. Like from the middle 2013. I was at the same college with his brother, his younger brother. So yeah. after that, when I came back, I was like, yo, brah, come through to, 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 to my place. I was staying in Lecture Road, then I stayed, I think, about two, two, two days. Yeah. For the first time, we had a conversation, like, brah, like, have this idea that I want to do, <laughs> let's do this. So the first one was the, what's happening at the family party was the idea that started around 20, 2016. Ooh. So that was initial, the idea was our beautiful garden store. Same concept with the family party. It was, the whole idea was to have a space where people can come through. So the idea was having a landmark where it's a, it's a, it's a space, there's internet, there's young people, they are different brands, just talking different brands, yeah. um, local structural brands. Then they, like the whole idea was done and perfect. Was like, Makas, this is what I'm mind. thinking, bro, what do you think? Makas was like, oh, I'm down, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. <laughs> so we did the first, first, what I can call maybe the first edition of Fabulous 2016. Yeah. Did a photo shoot, the same concept that we did on the first Fabulous Party edition 2020. 2020. We did it 2016, invited about five people. Yeah. <laughs> Had lots of bags with clothes, doing the shoes, people changing clothes. That's five people, 2016. Then 2017, I did some shoe shoes. I was doing photograph, yeah. top, top styling and photograph. Then 2018, kind of stuff. Makas, they formed Calligraph with Nyasha. That's 20, 2017 or 2018. Yeah. Then I was, when I was working with Van Spacey, I was doing music all along, but that's when I think I was hung a lot with the Monkey Nights. That's when I started working on the Van Spacey with Josh. So it's around 2018, so yeah. kind of stopped the... Um, the Fabulous Party. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. It was called Apple for Garden Store. Yeah. And stopped first thing. 
but the idea was same. Then 2021, we started doing the music, da 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 da. 2020, I was like, I'm like, yo, bro, I'm, I'm planning this, da da da. That's when I was like, uh, I'll start something called the Fabu Party. That was 2020. Then that's when it started. But in between, I was doing a lot of things, curating some events around town and stuff. Yeah. But it was all kind of centered into that vibe of community activation. Yeah. Community activation things. So, so that's, that's, that's interesting to me with you, like the vision was, mm-hmm. was, was so clear from, yeah. from the inception. But one of the things, um, uh, the impressions I've always gotten uh, mm-hmm. looking, at your, looking at your work mm-hmm. uh, is that, and I think this also extends to, to Marcus and Nyasha as well mm-hmm. a bit, right, is that um, you've always been particular about maybe not particular but you've always had this attitude where you use what is there so like you mentioned just five people uh, and you're doing these shoots (laughs) why is that like an intentional thing or is that like something that's always happened by chance and if it's an intentional thing why is that like such an important thing so it's it's always a matter of if you work in a collective or if you grow up in a family or if you grow up in a family that is functioning, yeah. I don't know if I, if I, if I may say that. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. a fair thing to say. No, I don't know how to put it, but I grew up in a family where I was with my, my grandparents, then my cousins and stuff. Yeah. But that power whereby I understand the, each other's strengths and we understand like the collective force, the collective power. Um, yeah. So far it's always been like that way we operate as a community and you understand that there's so many things that a certain individual might have, a certain individual might not have. So it's always about sharing resources, sharing skills, sharing knowledge and stuff. So that's how I've been operating and in fact, that's how we operate and that's how we've been operating and it's very important, yeah. yeah. It's, it's one of the most important things and really makes, it makes things happen. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. makes things happen. <laughs> and it's also, I think, I've been operating from a space of where there isn't much, but at the same time there's so much if combined. Yeah. If everybody is in one yeah. space. If, if, if you have a laptop, I have a camera, it means that we have... <laughs> Somebody has a lapel mic, it means that we have, we have a, a studio. podcast in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> so it's always looking at things like that where you don't have to wait or wait for funding yeah, or wait for like I need to raise the like, capital. Yeah, I need, I need 2,000 bucks to get a camera, a laptop. Yeah, you and, need yeah. to do it on your own. And also, it gives you the power to. It gives you the power to, to, to keep things, to keep your vision as it is. So the moment you ask, you get too much donation before your vision is clear, before your thing is established. Yeah. You get lost, bro. Yeah. You the the, so the message much. can get hijacked very quickly. Yeah, you get hijacked, <laughs> but like, even now, we always, always try and dodging a lot of bullets. There, there is so much that's happening, and you yeah. get, get a lot of calls, you get a lot of promises, you get a lot of people coming in and like, oh, we're doing offers. this. Uh, yeah, you get a lot of offers, but they're like, ah, no, this is shady, this is con, this is... It doesn't sometimes, align with the vision, isn't it, sometimes? Yeah, it doesn't really align. Some things align, but it's not the right time. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, some things align, but it's not the right time. So you have to build, it's like any other company that you're building or anything that you're building, you have to build it up. Stock has to, what's, what do they call it? Mm, whatever, share, stock, share. Ah, yeah, like shareholding, shareholding, shareholding yeah, whatever, yeah, I don't know yeah. how to call it, but <laughs> it's always value, build value, so that for us, it's always been even with everything that we've been doing, even some of offers, you don't take them because they are still a bit, people are not coming straight, they are, they are not coming right, so I have to, for us, it's always been, especially all the fabric part from day one, it's like, yeah. guys, for now, we're not taking How anybody's can we do this money. On our own? We're not taking anybody's money. We need to build and build and be at a point where we are able to sit on the same table yeah. with yeah. whatever and say, this is how we move. And I think that's an important thing to mention money. because um, the thing with taking money is <clears throat> it's then hard to push back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't. Because essentially you become an employee because there's always 
and and there's always like a, there's a subconscious threat you if I say no, mm. uh, that funding that helps build A, B, C, and D mm. is gone. It will be taken away from. <laughs> yeah, like you're being some are pushing their pocket and like, yeah, you're almost like an employee. Found, it's yeah. a weird thing. You're not an employee, but Mm-mm. you are because if they then say. Uh, like, like I can use the last fabric party as an example. If they, if whoever, if you had gone into partnership and someone says, um, it's, it's dope that you have like the skate park, but we're not really feeling it. Aish, bro, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine those things, like, no, I think I'll just, I'll, I'll just say things as they are, bro, like, cause if these things are never said, it's always, yeah. always crazy. So we can't instance, break that cycle. We can't break that cycle. So the reason why, like for me, I, in most of the times I've chosen to, to, to um, face certain things and be canceled. Yeah. So the good thing is if you get canceled by <laughs> now, you don't get canceled by the community because you are working with the community and what you, what you, what you um, fighting for like working in the media yeah. and working in certain spaces has given me a privilege to see so much exploitation happening and so many things yeah. happening. So being in that space and looking right at a community that is a lot of passionate people who are working so hard, bro, who are working very yeah. hard. And and putting their lives to this. Putting their lives to like. this. <laughs> and then somebody just comes in to because they think they're man or because they yeah. think they want to attach the brand to the cool thing <laughs> yeah i don't know like but if the man is okay cool 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 but there's, there's so much exploitation that happens especially in, in zim creative yeah. creative creative space creative scene there's so much exploitation people are desperate people need to eat we need to eat people need yeah. money but they that desperation exposes a lot of people to it to exploitation to exploitation yeah. and for me and the team like we can't watch that happening where we can correct things we have to we stand. be blunt and, <laughs> and, 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 and say things as they are as they are and where certain things are done and it's like young people getting exploited and you're yeah. watching you can't let that happen because yeah. you let that happen so president, that same thing will happen to your siblings, that same thing will happen to everybody and you're not yeah. building, you're not building and then so it, it's been like that and it's like that. It's it still like, is, isn't it? <laughs> so the third part, for instance, I think I would reference with the third part. First yeah. edition, that was the sixth edition that we did December yeah. 2022. That's the recent one. So as it grows, bro, there are a lot of, there is so much crazy things that are happening at the moment yeah. and there are a lot can of people coming. Can you give me maybe like one example where it's like, there maybe without like putting the name of the people, right? Of course, mm. <laughs> just an example for weird situation. Yeah, <laughs> like so weird situations are like, uh, for instance, how we got the venue, the last edition, like the other yeah. editions have been good collaborations, good ways, the Ipo Hub, oh, which, one, which one is that? The Ipo Hub. What was the September edition? Yeah. Domba. I mean, yo, I missed that and that broke you my heart. You missed that one? Yeah, yeah, bro. <laughs> like, that one was dope. Yeah. It was, in fact, every edition has been dope. So that one was cool. So like my point where we're going to yeah. getting offers or getting money. So the Ipo Hub, we paid everything on our own. They charged us the venue. We paid for the venue. Yeah. There were damages. We paid for the damages. And also we had an issue with the database things whereby, uh, you know, like, if, People were there. We had scans, drop on lock and sheets. Ah, oh, okay. Then the venue brought in their lock sheets. But we paid the venue, just a client was paid for a venue. Yeah. The next thing somebody is locking people on their database. Yeah. And we have our database. They sneaked in their database and their person by yeah. because you're too busy, you don't notice a lot of yeah. things. You, you, while can't, you can't see you. what was it happening because mm-hmm. you're really like quarterbacking the Yeah, so, so at the end of the event, you go to, um, at the end of the event, there were damages, some tables were broken, da 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 Then in the event, you check him, bro, like, like, uh, what's up? Then uh, my, the guys were at the get our team, yeah. like, I'm like, where's the database? Da, 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 we just need to check the numbers and stuff and cross check certain things. Yeah. Then like, ah, no, our last paper, our papers were done. So Ibu Hub was looking who get from, like, 
why were these guys locking people? <laughs> yeah. So like, like chilled, cause I was like, I should, we can't, we can't, we can't talk about it now, cause there were damages. There was a lot of yeah. So you kind of yeah, there's a yeah, lot of yeah, so you like, kind of owe them something. They feel mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. they so, they owe you something as well. Okay. Yeah. So on man, like we think after that we were like, oh, like, cool, let's do the meeting with them for reviews and stuff and yeah. paying for damages and stuff. So we go there to the meet, go to the meeting. Like you guys, okay, cool. Thanks for the vendor, da, 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 whatever. The whole thing. The next thing asking guys, uh, they're like, oh, so you guys have damages and stuff. They're like, oh, cool, give us the bill. But before you give us the bill, can we see what? The paper. Yeah, I had, the you guys one. were looking in. So now <laughs> I need to check who you let in because you guys were looking. It means that there are people that you let inside the building that we didn't know. We know our community, we know our people. Yeah. Then I, I'd gone there with some, some friends. Oh, I'd gone there with Nyash and Tafaso, Sharonga. Like, yeah. guys, the only thing that we're going there for is to get our database because you can't have yeah. people's privates being invaded. People at the Fabric Party trust us. It's our community. Exactly. So whoever is looking is looking to us, to the They community. don't want them. They're not <laughs> giving the information to somebody, to some to someone else. What are they who going might to do use it for something for else. Something else. So yeah. I got there, like, guys, can you see the paper? So that we can, while we're preparing for the, what's this, the, um, the damages, we just need to see who was in and who was, who was in and who are they. Yeah. So the moment they gave us the paper, then passed it to Nyasha, Nyasha folded it, it's like, cool, we're done. Yeah, the guys were like, ah, no. <laughs> so that was, so it's one of the things that you never see. Yeah. It's behind yeah, the like, same like, things where yeah, like, yeah. guys, we have built this, we've been working so hard and as now you can't just come in and mess up with the database or mess up with people's privacy. So there's so much that you always find. And those are like small things, but big things. Those things are like very big. Like they have big, like huge uh, implications. They are, but yeah. in the moment it seems like a very small thing. But small the, thing. The implications so can be always, huge. So after that, it's always following up. That's when even after that, the bill came crazy. The damages bill was yeah. even, I think it was equal as the venue higher kind of, kind of thing. Or like, that's why you're doing this way. <laughs> but anyway, it's, no, for us, never, it's never burning bridges, always just... Trying you know, to see how you're going to sustain yeah, the relationship yeah, after and, all that. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. My, things to people up, like, that. we have a set of venue, that's great. We, like, we, 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 there were damages and we really, we took, uh, we took responsibility yeah, for yeah, that. Yeah. But when things needed to be corrected, like, no, these Can things we also, need to be yeah. corrected because you can't have database, you can't have people's... That was invading people's privacy, privacy. in disguise. Yeah. People were looking and thinking that they're looking to us. The building asked the guys, we we'll need to know who's getting in. Like, no, we have our database. If ever there's anything, you put it on us. Yeah. Not <laughs> we'll take people. that hit, yeah, exactly. We'll take that responsibility. It has nothing to do with you looking. People are coming into yeah. the event. <laughs> this is not a building, it's an event. <laughs> it's a hired venue. So then the other thing, so that was cool, like we, we didn't have any problems with Able Hub because we had paid the venue. Yeah. <clears throat> then, fast forward, December. boom, December, there's this venue, it's all bush halls, offering artists the space, the venue, da 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 da. Ah, we all agreed, dope, cool it down, because there was a lot of pre- a lot of uh, galleries we were participating from Attila, the first look gallery, yeah, Bara Space, yeah. Amal Farm. Yeah, that whole building was just. Yeah, I so many things to people, happen. Yeah, I had a lot of yeah. people. Then, so how we got the venue, things, how we got the venue, information was coming in pieces, pieces. You don't know what's yeah. happening. You're like, oh, cool. We love the venue, but what's going on? What's this? What's going on? What's this? Then, next thing you hear that, ah, oh, there's so and so who does this, there's so and so. But information is coming in pieces because first of followers, just guys, there's this space, is dope. Do you want to do something? We already had a calendar. Mm. We were supposed to do the fall party, Marco Man. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a night after I think Basco's gallery. We were actually Basco's exhibition. We yeah. were talking about the fall party, and you were telling Happy me you're like Mago we're Man, doing yeah. it. Yeah, what Marco Man, type yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was that was the plan. It was happening at Marco Man. Then there was some after that. There was some that was happening at Marco Man. There were a lot of events that yeah. were happening at Marco yeah. Man. Like ah no, with this page. They had. I think they also had like a fest around that time. Yeah, Afro there was. Fest was uh, I there think was just Afro, Afro. Afro. Yeah, there were, there were a lot of events that were happening. There were about yeah. five, six events. Had like, two uh, festivals. The, mm, all so like dog, 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 dog. The space is always having so much. So we need to find an alternative event. Yeah. So. 
Then boom, this, event, this venue is there, it's greater man's inner city, because for us always about reviving the city, yeah. that's the inner city. Most yeah. of the creatives, most of the team that we work with, most of the friends that we with, the whole community is from the inner, inner city, city or works within yeah. the inner city, and the whole idea is reviving the city, bringing it back to life. So it was like, cool, there's this venue, it's looking dope. One day there was crazy dust and stuff. One day we were like, we jump, like, cool, we're down for this. The yeah. next thing here that there's that, there's that, there's that, there's that. There were so many things so that many things, so many, so many moving parts. Yeah, so many information was coming, coming in pieces. But today I told this, next day I told something, next day I told something. Up until like cool, we love the venue. To a point where you agreed, like, ah oh, cool, we love this we'll space. We'll do this. We'll yeah. do this at this space. It's a nice space. All much well. So the story was all much well is giving venue to creatives. Yeah. <laughs> Dub. Yeah. And all Montreal is committed to it, to clean the space, because it was locked for about nine, ten, eight years, I can't remember the space. Yeah. All Montreal committed to cleaning the space and doing plumbing, doing electricity, and offering it to, it, to creatives. Yeah. We're like, ah, oh, boom, dope, we love, we love the idea. We agreed to be part of it. Then, um, we had that first, all these other, Galleries are there also doing yeah. an exhibition upstairs. Then, yeah. as far as like Haku, for us, we'll need what? The bottom floor. Then, dope, like all things are nice. Like, there's a team, Zika, there's a team that is facilitating that. Then, yeah. I think two weeks before the Fabric Party, two weeks before the event starts, yes. or the weeks that the, yeah. the whole building opens, could be two weeks before, two weeks or two and a half weeks before, boom, Zika was born. Now there's Zika Festival yeah. that has all these things. Because yeah, initially, because they, they charged us the venue, but the price was ridiculous. Yeah. We could, like, we like, no, I can't pay this amount of money. It's too expensive. They're like, what are you guys can offer us what? What you want. Yeah. A certain amount you wanna pay. Like, I oh, know, give us an invoice. We can't pay this amount of money, it's too big but give us a reasonable invoice that we can afford. So the things were like, ah, no, guys, you're giving me the... So it was never clear. It was, yeah, it sounds, when, it when sounds it suits, really great. When it suits, the venue is full. You're given the venue. When it doesn't suit... So then, because <laughs> there was no clear, there was no <coughs> man that was paid up front, it kept, like, it brought a lot of things up by now at all that, you guys, you're going to have this HO event. You're going to have the, um, these elements, these elements, oh, these elements, yeah, these elements, yeah, these crafts yeah. elements. And you can't, you can't like say no because... No, we say no. You we say no, this is creative <laughs> difference. We say no, this doesn't work for us. No, this doesn't work for us. No, this doesn't work for us. Yeah. No, this doesn't work for us. No, we're pulling out like twice. Like, no, we're done. We're good. We've been doing this on our own. but never done it with anybody's man. We can do it anyway yeah. in any other place. Then uh, do some meetings, things chill, like you told me, oh, like, cool, let's work in peace, let yeah. me guess that, that over. <laughs> then second time, again, things start over again, where like you told, that you guys, yeah, this can't happen. This. So because you didn't pay man up front, a lot of bullshit kept coming, yeah. right? a lot of things kept coming, a lot of T's and C's kept coming, like we almost pulled out twice, up to a point where like we ended up getting the, Floor on our own, so the fabric part was on its own. Yeah, exactly. Zika was happening yeah. upstairs, but on the flyers there was Zika, there was fabric party, then Zika. But yeah. Zika was born, I think, two weeks before yeah. the building opened, and now yeah. it was the whole thing presenting. It, the was, it was almost, yeah, 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 the whole It almost like, became, it became like mm -hmm. a part of. Yeah, it became when I started when I saw at least when I saw the marketing when they started popping up because they were doing like a lot of uh, sponsored marketing and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I I yeah I had that impression it almost like became a mm -hmm. a a part of like a festival. Yeah, like Fabio Part was yeah. never part of any yeah. festival. Yeah. So That's it was the impression I got. <laughs> yeah, like and it messed up a lot of things because <laughs> nowadays there's it messed up a lot of things nowadays. Artists that we're working with, that are friends, that are coming to perform at the Fabric Party, and you negotiate with them, guys, this, we don't have much money. We don't have money, like huge amounts of money, on relying on 
get takings to help the production because yeah. we've been producing the event like doing the event on our own like from the first edition this the sixth edition we always yeah. fund it but now that it has grown and it's finished need all these things that's why we introduced the get taking yeah and our model is not commercial is our model of the final part is more like people putting resources to create together yeah. so that get taking is more like a contribution you're a content creator yeah for you to get in a space where there's set design done, where there is lighting done, for you to just put your camera, for yeah. you to just, that's how, it's more like people contribute resources to create their products. Yeah. It's not yeah. like people pay to come yeah. and watch. Because I remember, mm-hmm. and, and, and good context is, we were actually supposed to shoot yeah. our, this episode mm-hmm. during that time, but then exactly. it just yeah. got like really mm-hmm. hectic. And you're paying a, a ticket you're already contributing yeah. to a space yeah. whereby there is enough lighting, there's enough all these things. So people never see that that way. So now you have all these things coming in, you have all these problems, you have all these you have artists that are performing mm. and on the Zika information is saying that there's this fundraising that is being done and there are artists who are performing upstairs, they're paying this amount of money, they are yeah. paid, they their contracts. <laughs> and now you have your team down here and even the, the good example is the sound we hired. So we had, we had talked to the sound team, wanted to hire a sound system, right? Yeah. Initially, the condition that they given us was around 400 bucks. Yeah. Then the next thing they say, on Saturday, they, on Saturday, they sent us a message. Saturday saying, before the Sunday, before where Sunday, the, uh, the, say, the party they sent us a proper invoice, a different invoice saying, we need $1,200, but we can give you a discount up to $800. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. But they've been seeing, um, they've been seeing all these brands, <laughs> these embassies. Ah, oh, so they're thinking that, these owners have money because they are under they're this thing. Yeah. By mm-hmm. this thing. They are backed by this thing. Cause that's what on 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 social media. That was the impression, man. Zika pages and every people were saying these guys are funded by all mutual. All mutual gave us on behalf. They gave us the building. They yeah. cleaned it up. They did electricity, they did lighting and everything. Yeah. We're not given money. Yeah. They gave us the infrastructure, the building, the space. That yeah. was great. We really appreciate that. But we never got and for the record, yeah. nobody ever gave us money for producing the fabric party. And ever since we have never got money from Yeah, like ever since the, the inception of the fabric party. Ever yeah. since we fund the Fab Party on our own, the community fund the Fab Party. The Fab Party is for the community, it's by yeah. the community, it's not funded by anybody. So now we're facing that situation where by people, <laughs> the but artists are performing. Invoices. Yeah, Artists people changing invoices. And now, mobile. yeah, we even had to get a short notice. We had to get uh, Tando, we had to, had to find the PA system. Yeah. A short notice one, like these guys, I think, shared worked with them before, that's how I ended up getting the Tanum Lambo. Because yeah. I shout out to you. Yeah. Then it shout was out, short, out. short notice <laughs> arrangement. Then now you have a lot of confusion because people are thinking, what? You guys There's are getting money, funding from are these embassies. The are getting, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's people, the impression. Yeah, that that's the impression. Have. That's the impression. So it fucked up a lot of things. Yeah. And it also taught us a lot of things. Even now we're still facing a lot of damages because the community thinks this and the presentation was saying this and we're saying this so it's now so there's so many messages so many, so many stories around messages. yeah like so many which stories one around true? which one is true and it also like even messed up our finances messed up that's why even if you notice at the far part there was no food on the day oh yeah 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 people had to go like upstairs there was like a, a yeah yeah it's more cafe because yeah on saturday we were told that we can't do food because the Zika is doing food. Yeah. Like, oh, sure, cool. Our food creators got cancelled. They prepared somewhere. They have started preparing. They got cancelled. Then, following days, around 12 o'clock, we are told that, I guys can have your people coming to do food. Our team didn't come through. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Because, <laughs> right, it's Sunday. And you're told <laughs> on Sunday to call your people to do food. Few days, two days before they were cancelled, they were told no. Like that, it almost feels like that bridge is, is kind of burnt. Could you, you two days ago you told me that I can't come, I pass in a basa. Mm, then next then thing I'm telling you now to come. Now on yeah. a Sunday afternoon, you're like, mm, please can you come? What does that mean? So it messed up a lot of things, and 
Co- a, a lot yeah. of things we didn't have food. Like now, yeah. we're in the city, people go out. People, and buy yeah, food. because like pick and pay was really close. Pick and pay was yeah, close, yeah. and people in the, in the city and stuff. <coughs> but a lot of people missed out the performances because people were hungry. Like, are we going, going, yeah. going, going? But yeah. anyways, so my point goes to understanding all these associations like in terms of who do you engage with and what are the terms of engagement. Like, go to a point even where up to now we. If you, if you look at after the fire party, there's a lot of things that keep because you engaged in a certain space without yeah. clear terms of engagement. There's yeah. all these misconceptions, misinformation, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of all the things. And up to a point where there was an article by the Guardian newspaper. Yeah, I saw that, that article few... didn't have it as the fire party images only and the images and the story was saying Zika, 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 these artists were performing, celebrating Zika, this the fashion that happened at Zika, this is what happened yeah. at Zika. I'm like there is not even a credit yeah. for the photographers who showed those pictures. Zika is credited, there are no photograph and photo part is not even mentioned on that attic. It was. It wasn't made yeah, on the initial. It just wasn't like like a, like a it was respectful just, narrative. Yeah, and to the people who contribute to that. Exactly. Yeah, people are not credited. I'm like, you can't. These photographers work hard, bro. These designers work hard. We work hard. The yeah. community works hard. Everybody works hard, and you can't have all that work just going without going to credited. someone else exactly and completely like what the <laughs> what does what's that, that mean? what does that mean and <laughs> that's why instead of reaching out to the guide and and the journalist who wrote the story tell them what's that can you please this, can, can you, you this, if yeah. you can't correct the story please take out our images because yeah. the festival that you're talking about the performers were paid yeah. they had fashion show that was paid for that was funded that all these things that were done, yeah. like we don't know how they did it, but it if the like story is thing. It's a separate thing, <laughs> we're in the same building, we're still here to yeah. pay for the venue, yeah. like told the, 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 the organizer, please send us the invoice, we're still here to pay for the venue. <laughs> and if our work is just getting taken like that without, it being correct. And that article went viral as well, isn't it? Like, yeah, like, I saw on Twitter. It, mm, it came so, to me, like, I, I don't mm, follow The Guardian. I don't, mm, mm, at that time, I didn't follow the journalist. Yeah, but it yeah. got to me, and it got to, like, a lot of people. A lot of people, yeah. So even, but we, we were to, I'm like, guys, talk to the team, to the comment. Guys, this is what it is, and this is how it's going to happen. Lot. So we reached yeah. out. The Guardian understood. Then they'd correct the article. So if you go to that newspaper article, it's corrected. Yeah. The images that they kept on our, our images that they kept, they credited they them. They credited the photographs. Then those, the cool and credit they to remove and replace yeah. them with Zika images. Like who? Cool. It's not burning bridges. It's not fighting with anyone. Like right. we never just, fight. Yeah. We never fight. It's just like, getting like it's the just true narrative. Getting the true narrative and making sure that the hard work that people do is credited, right? Yeah. And that's what the whole community is all about for that's us. That's the whole like, point. That's the whole point of the community, <laughs> bro. And being on media, working as a journalist, seeing all these things, and you know how important intellectual property is, you know how important all these things are. All these things are. For somebody might just say, ah, oh, no, but still, we're on the newspaper. I'm like, yeah. do you know what that but, means? This article <laughs> will be there for the next 10, 15, 30 exactly. years. And, and that's how you essentially get erased from history. You get erased, <laughs> bro. get erased completely. <laughs> Completely, <laughs> and now you never know how. Then, in general, like that's what's happening, like in the country where people are like they come in, they see the work that you're doing, they want to erase you yeah. and you present, present themselves <laughs> as, as the one who the, the, the playmakers, who <laughs> served the whole city, who did this yeah. whole thing. Like, so everybody's <laughs> is working, they're grinding, respect their grind. But if ever you're going to step on the wrong, it's like territory, bro. Like we have <laughs> yeah. to defend our territory. Yeah. We have to protect the work, <laughs> all the work that we're putting in cause we're also looking at what's gonna be like 10, 15 years from now. And so also okay, like, what I'm always yeah. telling the guys, like guys, that was I was telling, this is the worst time. Yeah, we were talking building, about that just before yeah, we started. Building a community, like building, coming together as a community, doing all these things that was cool, but now, a lot of people are seeing this and it's happening. Vultures. It's vultures. It's happening and it's <laughs> dope. 
there will be so many offers that will come. Like for us, they know that maybe if they come to me, I might say no. They come to Makas will say no. They come to Nyasha will say no. They come to so they'll find weak links. Yes. So that's what I told the guys. The guys <laughs> always, we're not saying. At the, at our, in our community, we emphasize on independence. Even whoever wants to come over, it's like, what do you do? How do we collectively grow together? What's yeah. your brand? Yeah. That's why there's no name that says we are. The movement doesn't have a name. Yeah. It's energy. You can't yeah. put it. You can't put a name on energy. Energy. You, yeah, you can't <laughs> trademark energy. You can't trademark energy. So this is just a point that I'm saying to whoever. The moment you try to trademark energy or to, to, to own the energy, you don't own, I don't own the energy, I don't own the, I don't yeah. own people, we don't own people. Like There's so many different pieces that come together. It's to create like, a, hey, a with different game. brands, everybody's on his own, we are all different brands yeah. who work and support each other. So, part of me supporting others is also looking out for them because there are a lot of young yeah, young kids are in the game more with, like with youth comes mm. naivety as well. You don't exactly, know yeah. So sometimes. where we can yeah. say this is not it, you're being paid. and then listen, <laughs> we, yeah. So like, you can't trademark the energy. The energy is the energy, right? Can't stop it. And yeah. <laughs> now I'm clear, but like, what we always wish is always to see this happening and making sure that people get to get paid and get yeah. their money for what they're doing and get their credit and for what they're doing. Because yeah. exactly. for me, the reason why I even stopped doing other things was not just because, it wasn't because of money. The money was okay, but I wasn't getting credit. Mm. And I'll <laughs> eat that money. Then in six months, the money is gone. But what have you done for the you past don't year? Have that portfolio. There's no credit yeah. completely. So that's You're why like I'm like, a ghost worker, bro. <laughs> yeah, ghost worker, bro. Yeah, yeah, ghost worker, yeah, ghost worker. <laughs> So that's like, this guy has money, but you can't really tell, you can't trace anything. You're like, it's like, yeah, so it's, it's bad. So for me, yeah. whenever I see somebody taking other people's hard work, like, I'm like, nah, I can't let it, I yeah. can't see yeah. it happening. Yeah. I can't see it happening, but like. Such a complex thing. Such yeah, complex yeah, you thing can't, bro, you can't let it happen. The financial dynamics mean mm -hmm. people are tempted, man. Like, yeah, so now like, I always tell guys, like, now they'll just come to any one of you and, and, if you feel like, cause people always don't, I always tell guys, don't hesitate to ask us anything. Or if you like, think it's a top opportunity and you think like, ah, no, this bro is no. find somebody who's smarter than you to advise you. We mm. even have people advise us, like we consult a lot of people. We have yeah. our big sisters, our big brothers who we consult, who know better than us. Yeah. So I always tell the guys that whatever decision that you make, consult somebody and avoid putting signatures everywhere. <laughs> it's too early. It's, it's too, too early. early. Yeah, don't sign. Yeah, you, sign, you sign for life and you don't yeah. know what you're giving away. You don't know what you're giving away. And also even in terms of, I was telling the guys like, just be careful where you're being invited and what's the context, what's the occasion, why are you there, why are you invited on that yeah. specific time course. And of, like there are a lot of guys that we work closely with so someone can just invite you on behalf of us yeah. of everyone in the comment like i oh, have you have you so yeah. they'll sign they'll sign so people we just need to be smart and even like in terms for instance what taught us special was with the last uh part that we did was because we're given a venue that initial way given a venue that sounded as was a, sounded as a free venue yeah but it but put us and a lot of crazy things. You've, you've paid for it now. <laughs> we paid, we're still paying for it. Yeah. And we're still gonna yeah. pay for it in hard yeah. cash. Yeah. And we paid for it. So now, yeah. it's crazy, bro. Like, uh, I don't have a problem with anybody starting something. People yeah. should start initiatives. Yeah. We support all the we initiatives. Need that, but yeah. start it right, come right, do it right. Don't take, take, take chances. Don't, 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 don't exploit, exploit people. people. Don't exploit people. <laughs> Respect the people. People's work, respect what people are doing, and do it right. There's yeah. enough space for everybody. Yeah. There's enough yeah. space yeah. for everybody. Yeah. So I think people should just take it step by step. Things That's will right. happen. Like yeah. <laughs> and respect people. Respect people. Ultimately, respect. yeah. Ultimately, mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest one. And one thing, like if, if people will always think that things now people are smart, right? Things have changed. Like yeah. it's no longer <laughs> like back in the days where people were just. 
Uh, like people wouldn't have access to that uh, Guardian article. You yeah. wouldn't see it. Mm, mm, mm. Like the, the history would be rewritten, but you wouldn't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now people see things. Now, like the access to information is crazy. Exactly. And <laughs> the danger is always um, you do all these things, it'll come biting you. Yeah. You might have like secret reports somewhere, you might have some stuff that you. It's not on the public domain yeah. where you can go maybe and present and say, nah, this, da, 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 da whatever, whatever. But somehow, some my information yeah. is its own way of coming out. And moves, you know? when, when it crushes you, it crushes your heart, and yeah. it'll be hard to come up, or it leaves your name in the mud. Yeah. You might get away with it one or two, three times, but, but eventually, <laughs> eventually yeah. it catches up with you. So <laughs> you can't trademark the energy, you can't steal the energy, you can't steal the company, you can't steal anything. Like, we don't own yeah. anything. Like, I don't on the community. Yeah. The community is people with their energy is different vibes. We just respect just the community. We yeah. support the community. Yeah. We create platforms and we encourage them to create their own platforms and we yeah. encourage everybody to create, keep creating because the bigger the community, the bigger yeah. the voice, <laughs> it's a win for everybody. And yeah. that's what we want. Like I also want to, to rest and say, oh, cool, dope. We're doing the fabric party once a year because this, 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 this continuous. Exactly. The reason why exactly. we did three five parties was trying to make sure that we keep the energy alive, keep the energy alive. Yeah. But if there are more events happening, like let's rest and go and watch and support yeah. others. So yeah. there is home, yeah. there is space enough for everybody. Let's 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 just do let's it. Just do as much work as yeah, possible. and let's yeah. own it. Yeah. Let's create value and be able to sit on tables with whoever. And Let them see us as value yeah. and, and share. We're well, like, if this company or if this organization or if this way or if this business man or whatever person doesn't see the respect value. your value, yeah. or get your value, like, sure, cool, keep your money. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Keep your money. We'll, we are more than them. Yeah. The creatives are more than these agencies, <laughs> but we all yeah. beg too much. Let's make a compromise where yeah. the company. Like everyone meets Everybody each other, meet, like miss half, halfway, halfway, miss exactly. halfway, miss halfway, yeah. yeah. Cause if they don't want, let's chill and do our thing. Let's do things on our own. Cause, but yeah. like, let's do things on our own. Yeah. And let them do things on their own. Yeah. Up until we all. Up meet until like we can see eye to eye and respect each other. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that, yeah. That, that, I love that, man. I love that, and and so mm-hmm. it's good that we touched on the fabric party and. Um, because the fabric party and then some of that momentum has carried into uh bantu spaceships man and uh you guys have been working on an album for you know two nearly three years now right? Actually, yeah, it's been a long time <laughs> and it's coming in is it march um, it's 10th march 10th of march yeah like people can already get it like on vinyl but on digital platforms it's coming uh 10th of march mm-hmm. um this is yo Run to Space Ships is loaded in so many ways because um, I'm curious about so many aspects, but it will, I'll try to do justice um, yeah. uh, with, because Run to Space Ships is, is you and, and Joshua, right? Mm-hmm. Um, how did that come about? I think you touched on it briefly when you mentioned around 2016, 2018, 2017, 2018. Yeah, how, how, did, how did Run to Space Ships come about? So it was, uh, I, I think I've always watched Monkey Nights perform when I was at college, then from Book Cafe, when I was studying journalism, yeah. right, of course, so there was these open mics that were happening, like, oh shit, these guys are doing dope sound. I was, only, I was making music as well, yeah. like, I've been making solo music since, 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 I think since high school and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so, but in terms of sound, the sound that I was like, at the Monkey Nights is making dope sound, but never really got a chance to speak to them or do something then around, like, but I always, I was always seeing them around perform. Yeah. Then I think around 2015, I got in this contacts at Haifa. Then I traveled, then when I came back, I got in touch with them, then I started linking up. Yeah. They would do some stuff, I opened for them at National Gallery, there was some residence kind of thing that they were doing. Yeah. Then from there, I think we kept on having conversations, linking up and stuff. Then that's when, I don't know when exactly at what point, but we had a lot of conversations about music with Josh. I was doing some research about yeah. African music, Zimbabwean music, and it was also on the same page then. 
That's how I started exchanging, send me some beats to listen and stuff. The next yeah. time I started doing live sessions, then I'm like, ah, cool, let's make a nail for this and like, call it cool, can call it one space. Right, then that's how it came about. It's COVID 2018, 2018, yeah. around 2018, then I started having, late 2018, I think, then 2019, that's when the music started recording, performed a bit, then. COVID, COVID hit. Yeah, <laughs> but 2020, that's when I started working on the album with the 2020, like Sharp, 2020 Sharp, worked on the album with the Nyami Nyami Records. Yeah. That's the album that is out, that is coming out on the, yeah, on the, 10th. On the 10th, but it's on vinyl at the moment. Already, that's coming yeah. on the 10th of March 2023, this year that we're in. Yeah. But yeah, it's been like that, and we started working on that. By the way, performing before the COVID lockdowns, just did a few gigs. But yeah, that's how the that's how it came, came out. That's how it so, came out. your your sound is is interesting. Um, is is there a genre to it? Because I've seen uh, Josh post something called um, New Jit Wave. Is that like the name of the genre, or is that like um, something you've done, but not necessarily like the genre that then defines uh, the duo? Now I, I think I home call it the name of the genre, yeah. but it's, it's phases and it's findings. I think I'll call it a research project. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> kind of, yeah, I don't know what you call it, but this whole one specific is a research project. Yeah. So the album is a dissertation. Ooh. Yeah, maybe dissertation. So, so, so what guys are you, what, what were you guys researching? <laughs> so it's, it's more like trying to it has a lot of elements like researching this Zimbabwean music, then researching our Zimbabwean heritage. Yeah. Like from different, different facets, from different, different spaces, but from sound to history self, to artist self, to fashion, to yeah. whole culture, to the whole culture, to the urban, 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 urban setup, or to the whole cave paintings to the whole thing. Yeah. So it's more like that is search, trying to understand, tracing ourselves, tracing who we are, tracing, uh, tracing our lineages of yeah. our trees, but also tracing what our family vibe to, our community's vibe to what was happening and maybe in the 70s on this genre, how do we yeah. end up having this? Then we put out in a form of sound and music and yeah. visuals. So it's more like a research thing, it's more like an experiment where we're like, oh, cool. Then that's how all these sounds are fused and yeah. end up yeah. coming with all these, these elements. So that's think, interesting, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. A dissertation, I love that. Yeah, I love dissertation. That. <laughs> yeah, I love dissertation. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. And you've been working on the project for two years. Um, yeah. As as artists, like, mm. how do you know that a piece of art mm. is ready to be consumed by the world? Like, how do you know that it's ready to go out into the world? No, I think I think there is no specific time where you know it's ready. Yeah, it's just the moment you make it, it's ready. For me, the moment I finish it. In fact, the moment I make it, that period, yeah. if I get a chance to put it out, it has to touch that's the, people the perfect in some way. time. That's yeah. the perfect time. But because of the process and other technical things that happen, yeah. it ends up taking all these taking years, two and years all that time. Two years, yeah. but, and the danger for me, even with my solo music, is that special. But if you take that longer time, because it's expression. Yeah. If, if you want to sneeze now, yeah. you can't wait for two years. <laughs> if you have exactly. two years, you just have to, it has to go. You have to, and it has to go. So it's an expression, something that comes out, and if, if it's ready, when it's done, it should go out. But because of the process Technicality, and technicalities yeah. and all these other things, packaging and stuff, end up taking a bit longer. A bit, a bit longer. So I think there's never like a, a time, perfect time where or a perfect the indicator is right. Is is right to put it out. Yeah. So for me, I yeah. think I feel like it's always, even if you listen to our music, what's on the record and what we perform live, is different. Yeah. Because of that period where we made it, that was the seventh space we were in. Yeah. And we always make sure that when it went live, if it's if what we performed live last week, you go to our next show. It might be 
some, bit, but it's always different energy. Different energy. Yeah. Always different energy and different. That's why we always, because the research is continuous and the exploration is continuous and you keep exploring. Yeah. So I think that's yeah. why, I like, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, it's never, and I, I think it shouldn't be the same the whole time. Yeah. It's the same sound, yeah. some music, but. But the delivery is the informed delivery is by, like, maybe by experience, new yeah, experience. New experiences, yeah. yeah. So fair enough. That's how it's been, yeah. yeah, that's fair enough, man. Um, the um, one of the last questions I'll ask you before I let you go because we've been talking for a while now, right? Um, is uh, Yami Yami Records. So, music is particularly interesting to me in that it is one of those fields where uh, I'm like super curious but uh, not super knowledgeable. <laughs> I think that's the fairest way to say it. Yeah. Um, for those guys, why that partnership and maybe like what are you giving to each other in that partnership? Is that like a thing you can speak on? Mm. Yeah, so with Nyam Nyam Records is um, Nyam Nyam Records is a French based record label. Yeah. So what they're doing, they more into African music, specifically Southern African music. So what they've been doing, they've been repackaging the African music, the Zimbabwean and other Southern African music, yeah. re releasing it. So if you check even their catalog, they the first album by I think they are recent released before our album was the um, Dumsan Marayre's album. Yeah. She won uh, Dumsan Marayre and Maichi, and she won this one. She was thirteen years old. Mm, that's that's their last release. Yeah, she yeah. features on that album on one song. Then the rest of the album is his parents' album. Yeah. So that's they've been taking much up on 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 Zuma music. So. Our partnership with them is uh, more like a collaboration situation yeah. by they helped us, uh, we collaborated on the production of the album, mm. then on the um, marketing and stuff. Yeah. But yeah. we're not, yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not on a 360. Day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're still, still an independent, independent, yeah, independent yeah. band. And, yeah. But this is more like a collaboration, we collaborated on this album. If there are further collaborations, we'll collaborate. Okay, okay, okay. So, so it's like an album specific thing. Specific like if you album, guys decide to make two, three more albums, it's not necessarily it can be tied different to them. Yeah, it can yeah. be a different arrangement. Yeah, you can, yeah. You can revisit. Yeah, yeah, but we working yeah. with them in good yeah. terms. Like it's a dope collaboration. Yeah. It's a collaboration situation. Yeah, yeah it's not. The 360, yeah. Because I, yeah. I always hear people talk about 360s with. Um, Record levels. Yeah, with, with this negative, mm. there's like a negative connotation to it, usually when I hear it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm not familiar enough with that space, but mm. usually when I hear it, it it's that. Uh, and then Not so far, it's just yeah. that collaboration on the album and we're in good terms, working conditions, cool, yeah. like working color, collaboration, cool, cool. So yeah, yeah they you take it like from there. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. That's that's really interesting. So the last thing I'll ask you because yeah, you're in fashion as well, um, big uh, on 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 music, and then uh, sometimes you work on um, a visual art as well, right? Um, how do you get to decide which form of art to use when delivering a message? Like, how does that work for you? No, so it's um. It's a continuous process. It's never stopping or it's never waiting or you know, saying, ah, now I want to do this. It's yeah. just continuous way, like, uh, how I, I figured, like, so it took me so much time in terms of blessing or connecting things that I do together. Yeah. But now I made it in such a way, but if I'm not doing music for the next maybe two years, yeah. I'm just doing it or even without releasing music. But what I'm doing on, on fashion or what I'm doing on, on events or what I'm doing with events or yeah. with um, video art is still supporting the music mm -hmm. that I'm doing. Yeah. So it's kind of, I see like it as one thing. So it's yeah. just whenever I'm, oh shit, this idea, the t-shirt can be a top medium or yeah. a post that can be a top medium or a video art can be a top medium or sound can be a top medium. Yeah. All these can work together in the same time. So I don't really, I never really sit down and plan and say, it's just now knowing that these mediums, these are mediums that I can work with or yeah, that I'm able to work with, I just 
get it done and also yeah see what was was economical as well yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah. sometimes that is the easy yeah, right because like, we're like yeah. now i can't invest <laughs> this amount of money on music if i'm not going to sell it or now i can invest this amount of money on pieces on yeah, on, on, on to wear pieces exactly. because i'm going to yeah. I'm sell, going to sell them, them and make money. Yeah. So I think, yeah, it also informs mm. the decision of what when what comes next, yeah, what comes, yeah, what comes yeah. next, or how should it, how be. should we execute on a certain message? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I hear that, man. Uh, I love that. And what I was telling you, but yeah. it's always there's so much happening in Zim, and people I think people should always be honest with each other and yeah make it clear so that everybody who's getting into <laughs> what they're getting into, they understand. They know what they're getting into, And yeah. what it comes, the things that it comes with, like, you always see a lot of people, a lot of friends saying, oh, guys are doing well, guys are doing well. Like, it's crazy, bro. Yeah. There's no, it's because we chose what we love. Yeah. And we do it because we love it. Yeah. We're passionate about it. And we do it because with certain experience, you have kind of experienced certain things where like, like you get to understand how you deal with money issues and stuff. Yeah. But at the same time, it's still crazy. There's no money yet, like the real, real money. So yeah. we all- The structure's this, actually been That's built. why we always <laughs> serious about our work whenever somebody's misrepresenting it all, cause we need that money to come. Yeah. We need to work yeah. on that money. And you get tempted, you get to see the man on the side, like, oh, cool. <laughs> now I can't take this man yeah. for now. Like, you broke, like, you see that maybe you only left, maybe you have 50 bucks. Yeah. But, it's but you have to say no. It's in like, 3K, you exactly. say no. Because <laughs> what is coming with versus your long term vision yeah. is completely it's a different. Lot of it's a bad it's thing. Just, but yeah. if it was all about short term, we're like, Ga, 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 ga. Yeah. Cool. You take the money, you're in yeah, the yeah. I wasn't People gonna come I wasn't gonna come to to this session with the with the with the shigashi after yeah. pull up driving, but we still we still we still we're still it's, trying to make things yeah. things happen. But yeah, like and the other thing I think the most important thing is always just people need to understand what they're getting into understand what exactly. it takes for it. Don't be just carried by hype. We always encourage everybody, cool, you come to this movement, what's your brand? Yeah. How do you intend, or how do you want it? What's your brand? How are you sustaining it? How do you want to sustain it? Yeah. And what's the long term, short term plan? How do we exactly. collectively help each other? So that's the mindset and the, the, the standpoint that we're in, but we still. Building mode. We still struggle, yeah. bro. Like, still <laughs> crazy. Like, like, fuck, what am I gonna eat? Yeah. So, cause, I always, this thing that we always talk with Marcus about, like, is I was talking to, to Manga and Quentin saying it's too late to be a rich kid. Yeah. Now you can't have, <laughs> it's too late to be a rich kid. That part that part <laughs> has passed. So now most of the people that can relate to us is maybe it's the rich kids' parents. Yeah. Because what we're doing right now, establishing, is what they did for their kids. To establish, so exactly. For us, exactly. I think we're going to have rich kids, but it's too late for us to be rich kids. Be. <laughs> I, think, I think I share that yeah. sentiment with you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well. I, <coughs> and to be fair, I, I am fairly privileged, mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm not a rich kid, but maybe mm -hmm. quite close. Quite close. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. things being considered. Mm -hmm. But uh, as you get older, you, that dependency becomes less and less. Need uh, to stand on your yeah, own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm in my mid-20s, like right mm -hmm. smack, right in the middle, like 25 exactly, mm -hmm. right? Um, and there are certain things where I just see and I'm like, so this is going to pass me. So, so, to yeah. so my point is always, you're 25, right? Yeah. Who do you know that is 50? My dad is close to 50, just above. Um, and how young, look at him, how young he is and how young he looks. Yeah. So for, for me, my point is always yeah. at 25, plan something now. Start building. Establish it and think about it in 25 years time. Because yeah. at 25, <laughs> Plus 25, you'll be 50 years and that's, you'll be young as fuck, bro. Like, and that's be a lot so of young. work. That's and that's a lot, a lot of work mm. if you'll it's be young. Mm. a 25 year portfolio. Even just like a five year portfolio, bro, even no one can touch you. Selling one thing or doing one thing for the five years, 
Bro, like it's crazy. It's scary. Mm-hmm. So for me, that's it's the mindset. Scary. So I'm exactly. like, oh, my problem <laughs> now, but I'm doing this, and now I have to just put your things like, oh, cool. Yeah. I'm not dying anytime soon. If yeah, God willing. God willing. <laughs> what will I be doing at 60? Because at 60, bro, yeah. uh, you'll be still young. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's exactly how I look at it is um, if, if we work on, on building this information business, right? This business around informing people because so much goes on, but no one covers it with the respected true, service, true, right? Yeah. If we do that for the next 10 years, what does life look like for me at 35? And then for the next 20, what does it look like at 45? So it's a bit cliche to look at things in like 5, 10 years, but that's all there is to it. That's the best way. That's the only way to... That's the best way. I think that's the only way to stay sane when you have like 40 views on a video on YouTube. You understand the Like In in 50 years, I mean 25 years, bro. You'll be having a billion, years, billion I'll, views. Yeah, I'll, I'll sell this interview with Eleni mm-hmm. to like a broadcaster. Yeah, it, it, bro, it's like, like a longer game than just what it what it looks like today. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I think that's how mm-hmm. I kind of stay sane as a creative right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. been one and a half years, but we've made we've made some pretty cool strides. 